If you buy this after this video and you've seen this video, I really want to say the F word right now, but I don't use that word. Um, you are a freaking idiot. Like, just, no, I'm not going to go there. No, that's, 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 just don't do it, for the love of God. Yeah. Like, it's the, it's, you couldn't be dumber, because these are two the two worst pressure washers of all time. I'm sorry, I promise I wasn't going to do this. I will have to, I do have to admit, these are much, much worse than I thought they were going to be. It's like peeing out water. All right, welcome everybody to the OG studio where we talk about products and um, you'll see I've got uh, a couple next to me here. Um, I want to make sure uh, make sure we don't uh, misconstrue this as some sort of endorsement. This this is um, I thought a lot about this, you know, on, on how to make this video. Uh, and the reason I bought these pressure washers was because I've seen lots and lots of people, you know, that, that I feel like I'm in relationship with in the OG Facebook group, you know, posting and questioning uh, what the, you know, these pressure washers and why, why don't I buy, you know, this. Uh, and so I wanted to answer that question. I already knew the answer. Uh, but just just because I've, I've touched and felt all these pressure washers, you know, well over a hundred of them, every Sunjo, every Karcher, every Greenworks, every AR, you know, and 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 so I have a uh, a pretty solid body of knowledge of all the different fittings and hoses and the pumps that they're using to make these things, and so I'm, I'm going to not do me on this video like I w like I was going to do, um, but I, I I do feel like we need to have a conversation about this and I need to educate you a bit and uh, and help you to uh, make make decisions here uh, especially those of you that are starting out or, or maybe those of you that just aren't that great at buying stuff uh, because it's not easy you know especially the way we're marketed to in the world uh, you know the, the 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 marketing a lot of times can suck us all in and um, and I, I I would be, I'm susceptible to that in certain areas, but in pressure washing, uh, clearly I'm not because of all the, all the time I've spent invested in this. So if you're watching this for the first time, you're here at Obsessed Garage for the first time, my normal MO would be I'd be kicking this thing and, um, and, and telling you how stupid you are for buying this and this is junk and these guys are idiots. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I want to so badly. It's uh, everything in my being, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of take you through you know, this, the, why these things are, they're the two worst, these are the worst pressure washers I've ever tested of any of them by, by a long shot. Even like the little baby Sun Joes that are terrible, like I would take those because they're like 50, 60, 70 dollars. This one here to my right is 599 dollars, and then this one here is uh, what 380 dollars. Insane, just absolute insanity. Uh, and so, and you see these popping up by like you know, you know, by by. by I, I don't think that they have a budget to pay people, so they haven't paid like big influencers. Um, but you see a lot of uh, a lot of us mid-level people and below, you know, people starting out with, you know, with five thousand or twenty-five thousand or fifty thousand subscribers, um, getting these things. And and when we when when we're when we're starting out on YouTube, you have a tendency. Um, a lot of people have a tendency to, hey man, this is great. I get something for free. I get to test it out. I get to try it. This is great. Um, I had that too early on, but well. Um, Every single person that has done a review on these, just they, they, they just had to lie. You know, they had to just, uh, let's not say lie, they had to just pretend, let's say. Uh, pretend um, either, either they just didn't know any better, because uh, these are two, the two worst pressure washers of all time. Like, no question. Worst everything about these. They do look good, um, and they do have a nice inlet fitting, but everything else is the worst of every pressure washer that exists on the marketplace. And they're the two most expensive in the cheap range of pressure washers as well. So you have a double combination in most expensive and worst, right? Worst performing, worst hose, worst retraction, hose, like everything about it is the freaking worst. Uh, and I'm not just doing me, like I said, I wanna stay 
um, candid with you, and I want to help you think through this. Uh, but um, but it's there's no other way to put it other than it's absolutely terrible. So we, we tested these out, and I, I'm I'm not going to waste another second on going sweating my nuts off and doing another test for you. We actually tested these in our eight-hour live stream that we did at the end of the uh, the GT3 giveaway, uh, and um, and so that's where I'm getting this 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 information from. You know, we did my test that I made up where I take the bucket and you stick the you know stick the wand in there and hold it for a minute, and then we did the test with the you know with the, with the SPL meter and we checked out you know changing different orifices what what do we get with the stock configuration and then what do we get with the with the um, you know with a modified configuration doing doing different nozzles so let me explain how these pressure washers work so there's a pump somewhere in this contraption likely underneath the hose reel here so there's a pump these are sealed pumps, right? This one is an induction motor. That's why it's $599. By the way, induction and pressure washing is the worst. You don't want that. They sell it as better, but it's the worst. It cannot, they cannot produce flow. Oh my gosh. We're at 800. That's how weak the pump is. They can only produce pressure. Uh, and even when they do that, it does a terrible job at it. And they have a hard time turning on and turning off. One of the main advantages of a electric pressure washer is they're quieter and you can and it turns you can add a pressure switch to it to have it turn off and turn on. So when I pull the trigger it turns on, when I release the trigger it turns off. Uh, and these guys managed to find the worst pressure switch ever created. That is terrible. Way worse than I thought. Because they have this weird ramp up and weird shut off and the induction motor actually makes that even worse. So you would absolutely positively never want to buy, if you're gonna buy one of these, don't buy the induction motor because it's terrible. It's a terrible option for pressure washing. So anyway, there's a pump in here and the, these are the you know generally Chinese contract manufactured stuff. This is a catalog item. This is a marketing company um, that is trying to market to you this great solution. They've solved all the problems. Uh, and then what they do is they create different tiers. It's all the same thing. Now, this particular one, I put a different motor on, but there's the, there's like the whatever base model, and then there's the, then there's the pro, and then there's the pro plus, and then the, this is the pro plus plus. There's plus and there's plus plus. Yeah. Plus hmm. with a plus sign. Super wear resistant. What is the hose? Who knows? Or the pump? The plus. Uh, there's no advantage to buying this one over some of the, you know, the base models. Uh, you, you, get, you get sucked into thinking you're buying something better. But that motor, that, that electric motor, and then the pump in here is a, it's, it's about yay big. So it's about this big and it's sealed, uh, meaning that the, the um, oil that's in it uh, doesn't get changed. So it's a sealed unit and that's not necessarily the world's worst thing, but when you seal it, uh, you can't change things like check valves, you can't change the plungers, you can't change the springs, the retainer springs and stuff like that. You can't, you can't do maintenance to it. Uh, and so it has a lifespan. I would wager this is probably designed to be like a 75 hour lifespan. And then they're banking on the fact that most people aren't gonna use this thing for more than, you know, more than a little bit at a time. And most of the time um, people are, you know, they buy them and then it ends up collecting dust in their shed somewhere. So most people that buy these consumer-based pressure washers don't use them because well, you buy them to clean your patio. You know, us car guys are buying it. We're going to use it a lot more than the person around their home. But you buy this, you put it in your garage, you think you're going to wash your cars, you're going to clean your patio, you're going to clean your driveway. But this doesn't have enough output to do any of that stuff. It doesn't even have enough output to really clean a car very well, let alone take, like, you know, algae off of a, off of a, a, a deck or something like that or clean a pool deck. You'd be there all year, you'd be better off with a garden hose. Because if we go up to a 3.0 nozzle, we only get like 500 PSI. These are, these are triple, or these are not triple pumps, these are radial axial pumps. So just to simplify this, there's a plate and that plate wobbles around. So there's a, there's a shaft that comes out the electric motor and there's a plate that's attached to it and the plate wobbles. 
like this. And as it wobbles, it hits these three plungers. And so when the wobble plate goes, it pushes plunger one. And then as it turns, plunger one comes out, plunger two goes in, and then you know it goes and hits plunger three. And so there's three plungers in here, and that's what creates the pressure on the head of the pump. These have a head, a pump head that's like, you know, yay big, tiny, tiny little pump head. Uh, and so you have a small electric motor inefficient motor because these are drawing you know, 13, 14, 15 amps, so it's a pretty inefficient electric motor. You have then the sealed enclosure with the radial axial with the, with the wobble plate, uh, and then you have the three plungers, and the three plungers then push and pressurize the water in the head of the pump, and then it comes out and comes through the hose, and, and, and that's what creates pressure. And then the way that you control or adjust pressure, so the pump's going to do what the pump's going to do. You know, and so a better, more robust electric motor can then can support a more robust, better pump. Uh, and then um, your pump may have some headroom in pressure and flow for adjustment. The cheaper and less robust those three components are, uh, the less adjustability you have in changing the nozzle size. So ultimately in a pressure washer, the way that we adjust pressure and flow is by changing the size of the frickin' hole that comes out of this thing. So if I look through here, there's a tiny little hole out, out this. Yeah, that's 400 PSI. 400. Yeah, yeah, so I need like a three. Here's a three. Minimum. I this mean, is, this was a maximum. 1.9. Real world effective pressure of a zero degree, like a straight nozzle, if you were to take what is the pressure at the pinpoint, which you can't really measure, or at least I can't, I'm sure there's some tool that could measure that. But if I had a zero degree nozzle or a 15 degree nozzle, theoretically, if I take a zero degree nozzle and I shot it at my finger, it's probably gonna hurt more than if I took and had a 45 degree nozzle and shot it at my finger. But this, the size or the pattern, the, the angle of the pattern doesn't change the pressure because the hole coming out of here is the same size. It's just a question of after it comes out of the hole, how is it diverted? So how is the, like this one is a circle hole, uh, the 45 degree has the same size hole, but then they divert it through basically a slit or a straight line. Um, but the effective size of the hole is the same on all of these different degree nozzles. So don't get hung up on, and you're not going to use these anyway most of the time. Most people you're going to use maybe a 25 degree if you're washing dirty or nastier things, uh, or, or a 40 degree would be generally my recommendation when you're washing a car. And so these machines, and this is, you know, this is, I guess, a, a good thing for them. They're publishing it, but um, uh, this one comes with a 1.9 sized nozzle. Now, most professional grade pressure washers, or actually, let's say, most gas, gas pressure washers, like three, four, five, six gallon per minute uh, pressure washers are gonna use an orifice size of five, six, seven, eight point oh. You know, so really, really large hole in comparison to what this is using. So to put into perspective how weak and how non-powerful, if you will, these pressure washer, these little electric motors are, the little electric pumps are, um, they're having to, in order to get any kind of output from this, um, they're having to change the size of the hole to be extremely small. The smallest we sell is 2.0. This is below 2.0. Uh, and so this is a 1.9 sized hole. So the hole, instead of being this big, is like, you know, a tiny, tiny little hole. So they shrink the hole size. And so with their stock, you know, on, on let's say on the, on the plus plus, it's freaking stupid. The plus plus version, it, when measuring with this stock wand, um, the pressure measured right at the inlet to the gun is how we measure it. Um, is 1500 PSI. Uh, and then the electric motor is drawing 14.8 amps. So it's like right at the limit. If you had like your, if your lights were on the same circuit as the outlet, the thing's gonna trip the breaker. So one of the main advantages of these cheap pressure wash, well, let's say expensive garbage pressure washers, one of the advantages to them is that you'd be able to run it on like a normal household circuit. You don't have to do anything special. That's, that's kind of the point. But you're not gonna be able to do that with this. And then there is, and so 
I have the electric motor, which has a certain amount of output that can drive the, the, the shaft that then makes the wobble plate move. Uh, and then I have the pump, you know, the head of the pump that creates the pressurization of the water. Uh, and so I have limitations. So if you were to go theoretical, what I could do if I wanted to increase flow is I just open up the hole. But when I open up the hole, then I lose pressure. And if a pump has a lot of capacity or a lot of headroom or a lot of output, uh, so you have a lot of, you know, your, your electric motor windings are really stout and you have a great, you know, heavy duty industrial electric motor driving the, the, the shaft that then drives the wobble plate, which then pressurizes the pump. If all those components are high, high quality, I might have some ability to open up the nozzle from the suggested amount uh, and then maybe the pressure drops a little bit but I can increase my flow um, so I may have some variability. So on like a lot of these pressure washers I would take and it would come with like a 1.8 nozzle because everybody thinks you need pressure. You don't really need pressure especially for washing cars you want flow. Um, so to add more flow, I could open up the nozzle from say a 1.5 or a 1.8 or 1.9 up to a 3.0 or a 3.5. The pressure would drop from say 1500 down to 1000 or 900, which is where I want it to be. Uh, and then I would go from say one gallon a minute or 1.1 gallons per minute up to say 1.3, 1.4, sometimes 1.5 and some of the better cheap, cheap pressure washers like some of the green works and some of the, the carters did pretty well with that. This one, um, I went from the 1.9 orifice, um, I'm sorry, I got this wrong. This one comes with the 1.8 orifice, not a 1.9. So it goes from 1.8, when I went to a 3.0, it went to like 400 PSI. Now that's not useful. Uh, and so we added a 2.5 nozzle. So we upsized or opened the nozzle up a little bit. Uh, we went down to 1150 PSI at 1.31 GPM. So again, we have a $380 pressure washer that has a bunch of garbage attached to it that you don't even want. This is the worst hose I've seen of any pressure washer. Like I could cut this with a pair of dull like Crayola scissors. So uh, the key feature on this one, Matt, is you can replace the hose. Mm, that is a key feature because you're definitely going to need to replace <laughs> it. <laughs> this one, the pump is so weak in this thing that yes, we we dropped we dropped about 350 psi, but we only gained point uh, what point one seven gpm. Um, so we did drop the amperage draw. So if I did put a 2.5 nozzle on this, um, it would make it so that I would be able to get um, you know and run it on a on an unclean circuit, if you will. I have two amps of headroom on a you know say 15 amp circuit. So it does drop the the amperage draw down to 13 amps. So. Think about this, the hose, so I have the hose, I screw the hose into the gun, I put the nozzle on the end of the wand, and then that's how it functions, right? So m almost all of the work is really done by this guy. So the nozzle is very, very important. But it's not as simple as you could say, Matt, well, I want more flow, so just do a bigger nozzle. If I go from 2.5 to 3.0, that's when we drop down to 400 PSI. So we probably would have increased flow to maybe 1.4, but we have no pressure. So you do need some pressure in order to make that respective or make that 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 um, that flow useful. You know, you you, you want to find that happy medium. And again, for washing cars, I want a thousand psi and three and a half gallons a minute is what I'm looking for. And so this at 380 bucks versus the active 2.0 at 380 bucks. The active 2.0 does 1.9 gallons per minute at 1,000 psi with a 4.0 nozzle. To put it in perspective, usually you can tell the quality of a pump by how you know the size of the nozzle, and so um, that it's that's not exact, but it, it does give you a good good idea of how robust the electric motor is, and then you know how robust the pump head is. The active 2.0 is a sealed unit as well, probably made in the same factory as this is, uh, but these guys managed to go to them and say. What does the worst Greenworks have? We want worse than that. Just crazy to me. And these guys are so much further late, they're so much later in the game. I think what probably happened is, well, one, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, it's just a, a Chinese marketing company. And there's, I'm sure there's some real shady looking dude in the US who's responsible for, you know, for, for, for this or runs it for the US. Um, you know, someone who's willing to sell their soul to the to 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 sell some some units, 
And then they, you know, spent all the money on Amazon ads and ads on Facebook and Instagram. We've all we've all gotten the ads for these things. And so when you see it on their website, it looks freaking awesome, man. It looks cool. It's got this nice gray. The colors are good. This one has the cool orange to it. Um, but there's absolutely no thought into, hey, let's do a great pump. Let's try to get, you know, get good performance. I'm sensitive to the argument by many people who say, look, I could buy a hundred Ryobis for every one Krenzla and it works. You know, I, I can, I, I can, I'm, I can understand that argument. Not how I live. You know, we're shooting this on a $10,000 camera and a, uh, you know, and a $3,800 tripod with a $3,000 light on a $5,000 table. We could do this all for less, but you know we use this all day, every day. The user experience is so much different with a with a, a Sackler um, you know tripod. You know I'm talking to you on a you know this is my old uh, Nvidia you know uh, or um, Intel MacBook Pro. I don't need a MacBook Pro to to read a spreadsheet, but yet you know there's something to be said about you know the the excellence and the the value of user experience. So that's why, you know, to me, I wash my cars off and I really value that experience. So I'm willing to invest quite a bit of money in that, you know, $3,000 Krenzel that's on the wall with the hose reel and all of that stuff. So the, the numbers on this are some of the worst I've measured and it's the loudest. This is what shocked me. I, we didn't see anything over 72 decibels. So this is 75 dB. So it's, it's um, a, a magnitude, an order of magnitude, or two order, three orders of magnitude louder than the loudest of all of the pressure washers I tested. Cheap, expensive, it's bordering on like gas pressure washer. So it's the loudest, it has some of the worst output, it has the worst hose, and it's one of the most expensive. So what i'm what i'm hoping to get across to you here you know i don't have any ill will toward these companies i used to have that i've you know i've kind of matured a bit i think as you can tell because i'm not really losing my crap here um i i I assumed when i bought these that they'd be just like all the others and that's why i knew these are three four five six hundred dollars you don't want this i knew as soon as i saw it as soon as everybody started posting it and i knew people would want it because you're being advertised it They've done a great job and the website looks beautiful. These look really cool in photos and videos. They went out and blitzed all the, all the, the smaller starting out YouTube channels and detailers and four wheeler people and all of that. And then they, you know, they don't know how to like, like they, I'm sure they feel obligated. I know I do if I ever get anything for free. So I don't freaking want anything. I bought these by the way. Um, if I didn't, I'd probably be getting a you know, letter, you know, um, I bought these from Amazon and freaking thousand bucks is insane. So, um, these, the, the thing that's shocking to me is how all these other pressure washers exist. This is pretty established how poorly they put these together. Like they're the, they're the worst. It's the worst pressure washers of uh, any, I'd say that 15 times. So then the pro version, just to give you the numbers. So the pro did 2,350 PSI uh, at 1.17 gallons per minute. So yeah, you get lots of pressure, but you can't get anything done because there's no water coming through. 1.17 GPM is terrible. Uh, now this one is quite a bit quieter, but like most induction motors, it takes about three seconds for it to ramp up. Uh, and then takes another probably 15 seconds to get to full pressure uh, and then takes about five seconds to ramp down and it's uh, but this one was 70 decibels so it wasn't wasn't as loud but it's super heavy this one probably weighs about 50 pounds uh, and then both of these the hose <laughs> i don't know how they're gonna get freaking sued if you let go of this thing like it i mean if it's anywhere near any glass, if it's near your car, it would break the rear window in your car. I mean, it goes at like a thousand miles an hour as it winds up. Just a freaking terrible design. Let's do. Let's try that right now. I want to see that for sure. <laughs> it's definitely gonna whack on the cars. Pretty good. 
some of the videos where you know it's on the wall with the bracket and because this is all plastic the housing's plastic it's not reinforced it kind of wobbles on the wall and it's just it's everything everything about it is about how it looks in a photo how it looks in a video not about how it performs and anybody who's gotten one of these and didn't send it back immediately you should never trust anything they ever say to you again because they have no idea what they're talking about like it's it's just even if you didn't have any idea what you're, what you're talking about, I, I just, I've never seen anything like it. Like it's the it's 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 unbelievably bad. So uh, we we changed the orifice, went to the 2.5 orifice. If we went to a 3.0, it fell off a cliff and had no zero pressure again. Uh, so we got 1100 psi at 1.29 gallons per minute. Now much more efficient. Uh, this one drew 10.8 amps. Uh, when we did the um, with the 2.5 nozzle, so that gives you tons of headroom on a you know to, to put on a regular 15, 15 amp circuit, and a, like I said, it operates at 70 dB, so quite a bit quieter, uh, and it has a pleasant sound, you know, because induction motors do sound quite a bit better. But induction motors not what you want for a pressure wash; it's the worst option. You think you're doing better, like Greenworks has one, Sunjo has one. You think, well, man, you know, I don't have a thousand bucks or eight hundred bucks to spend on an AR professional. I don't have that 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 allocated to this, uh, or I just don't have it. But man, I can I can come up with four hundred to get a nice induction motor. But you're you're again, I'm telling you, you're better off with the sixteen hundred psi or seventeen hundred psi Ryobi in the little box. Uh, it has a two-year warranty on it. Breaks every six months. You throw it away, and they give you, and they send you a new one in the mail, uh, or you take it to Home Depot, and they give you a new one. Replace. You can replace the hose. You can replace the gun. You can replace the wand. You can replace the orifice. You can replace the foam cannon, and you can end up with a really decent user experience. Uh, and and now I think the cheap pressure washer to buy, which I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, we actually sell them, which is crazy to me. I didn't think we ever would. Uh, but the Karcher is the best one. Um, Karcher is the only one that's manufacturing in a different facility. The ARs, the Stanleys, the um, you know the Briggs and Strattons, the the Steel, the Craftsman, the um, those are all made in one place. And then you have the Sun Joes. I think the Greenworks might be made in that place as well. But then you have the Greenwork, the the Sun Joes, the Ryobis. Those are all pretty much the same pump. I took a bunch of them apart. Um, but they're all, again, they're all the same sealed pump. They're all the same thing. And then they create this, you know, this is what's going to happen with this company, mark my words. They're going to have 45 different pressure washers. They just launched their next version, which is going to be garbage. As soon as somebody gets one of these, especially if you recommended it, if you recommended it, you're freaking nuts. Um, but if you recommended it, you're done, donezo. You know, you've, you, you're, you're, you're never going to have, the only people that are going to be watching you are going to be like the people that are watching Dallas Pain Correction Guy, who is a total, he's lying every word he said to you, just a total scam. Um, you know, the guy's been detailing for six months and telling everybody he's been doing it for 30 years. Um, and so those that, that fall, if you fall, you know, if you dupe people into falling for that, um, you're going to end up with an audience of people that you don't want. You know, you don't you don't want people that that are going to be you know susceptible to that kind of duping. So uh, you know, if if you have one of these, you know, if you're a YouTuber and influencer or something, you have one, just send it back. Just say, hey, you know, look, I I, I decided I don't want to do this. Can I send it back to you? They won't want it back because this, these cost them almost nothing to make. Um, they'll just say no. You know, just keep it, throw it away, do whatever. Um, but I'm telling you, don't. Don't do it. So I think my PSA, my message to people here is that, and I've been saying this forever, uh, and this is why I even have a business that exists and why I'm not selling mutual funds still. Um, there's no free lunch in the product world. And the products that are highly marketed, you know, there are some great, I mean, Apple is highly marketed. You know, there are some great, highly marketed products, but rarely, Rarely are you going to get something advertised to you that's you know that that has the polish that it does on Facebook or Instagram. Rarely are you going to have you know products that are showing up for free. Krenzel doesn't send anything for free to anybody ever. You know, partly because they're not so great at marketing, so you gotta you gotta hand it to you know they're they're not marketers. They're they're practitioners. They make 
products. They're, you know, it's a German product. And the Americans that represent them at Krenzel USA, they're um, like, they own Dirt Killer USA. They're like in the pressure, they're like servicing the machines. They're in the pressure washing world. They're selling to professional pressure washing companies, guys that go out and clean skyscrapers and driveways and stuff like that. So they're in the business. Um, those are the people that are hard to find, that are harder to find, it takes more work, you gotta take some gambles sometimes, and what I'm hoping to do is take and, and remove some of that equation for you. Um, for many, many people that maybe don't have, that may be susceptible to this kind of marketing, I'm hoping to help um, and hoping, my hope is that I provide some value so you'll buy it from me, of course. Uh, and if these were great, I'd be pursuing them and trying to say, hey, you know, we need to be selling these to, to our customers. But um, I'm telling you, uh, you've got to be careful with uh, the highly marketed stuff. You're just getting, you know, the Sunjo was the high, most highly marketed one. It's the worst of all the pressure washers uh, that we, you know, that we tested. Um, the, the Karchers were much better, the Greenworks were much better, um, but the Sun Joe had done the best job marketing and so more people had those than others and then next thing you know, they've, they, I think they literally have 50 different pressure washers, it's insane. They're all the same thing, just with different plastic attached to it. So um, I think the, the moral of the story, just freaking email me and I'll tell you what to do. Like, like I, I can, you can spot it a mile away, uh, and I know that many of you haven't had the experience. Um, I used to think it was because I was better, uh, because I knew better. Well, the only reason I know better is because I can't drive a car down the road, because I'm deeply afflicted with this, this gene of obsession and chase for products, and uh, it's, it's what's made me great, but also made me have deep, deep flaws and deep issues. Uh, and and uh, but I can spot I spotted this a mile away. The only reason I bought this was out of pure frustration of seeing the sixth or eighth post in my Facebook group of people saying, "What about this? This is going to be great." Part of it is people thinking they discovered something when you didn't realize that you just got an Instagram ad that doesn't make you good at discovering stuff. It was targeted to you. Uh, but the other part, they're looking to say, "Man, maybe this could be good." Uh, and just I'd say, just freaking ask me, and I can tell you in two seconds. Uh, and it's not because I'm not selling it, uh, it's because I freaking know, I've seen it, I've seen it so many times and I just have this thing in my gut that just tells me whether something's good or bad. I will have to, I do have to admit, these are much, much worse than I thought they were going to be. There's, there, these, are the la these are the most recent pressure washers that come out. There's all this information. I even gave it to them, you know, and then everybody kind of, there's tons of things that have kind of copied that same testing to pressure washers to validate that. Uh, tons and tons of information out there now. Nobody was talking about orifice size or flow or any of that crap when I was searching for this for myself. Uh, so I had to create, I decided to create the content. So they have all this data. Uh, they have all this information and they still manage to screw it up royally. That's how you know they have no interest in pressure washing. They're just trying to separate people from money. Uh, and that's when you have a recipe for a disaster product like this. So um, they'll probably be out of business. Um, you know, it just depends on how much money they raise because these are all going to fail. Um, you can you pretty much guarantee that it's stuff and these are going to break like crazy. And these are really expensive to ship and are shipping them for free. I mean, this was 64 pounds in the box. Um, so they're really expensive to ship. It's going to be really expensive to send out replacement parts and replacement units for them. Um, so these guys will have to disappear um, because there are going to be so many complaints. They have to turn off comments on advertising because, you know, people get them and think that they're getting some $600 nice piece of equipment when it's way worse than the $70 Ryobi stuff. So anyway, um, I don't know what else to say other than I felt compelled to buy these even though I told everybody, look, there's no, this is a waste of time. Uh, testing them then you know, validates my what I surmised only worse uh, and so I'm telling you send an email mad at obsessedgarage.com I've helped tens of thousands of people figure out a pressure washer um, you I think you're nuts if you don't buy it from me because I'm gonna save you a lot of money in the long run because um, you don't know what you're doing and you're gonna get led down the path by companies that are taking advantage of you. It's, um, 
I don't know what to say other than, I don't know what else to do other than to keep building the website and maybe I need to advertise more. Maybe I need to be the one in your Instagram feed, you know. Um, but I don't sell cheap stuff. I don't sell stuff that, 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 that seems like a great deal. I don't, there are, there are, there's no such thing as a great deal. Uh, unless it's, you know, unless somebody bought something. I think where great deals come in is when somebody buys something, they realize they really don't value it and they sell it just to get rid of it. Um, I'm about to walk into here and ask anybody if they, otherwise I'm going to go throw these in the dumpster. I, I'm not even going to put these on, on, um, on Facebook Marketplace. I, I cannot. I did that with all the other cheap pressure washers, all the Sun Joes. I felt like we could modify it, make it a little bit better, um, but these, I can't even do it. There's nothing I could do to make this worthwhile. And so I'm either going to ask some of the guys, somebody might want it, one of the warehouse guys or something might want it just to have something for the time being, but I can't, I can't even sell these. I, I should freaking return them because they, they sent these out and I paid the money for them and it's like freaking total garbage. But I, I, I just don't do it. Once I opened it and used it, I don't do that. So, so let me just say that. Let me let me say this. If you have one of these, normally I would tell you you're a effing idiot. But I'm not going to do that because you didn't know because we, they they look great. But if you have one, you can't change the hose. I wouldn't change the hose. What I would do is I would buy a um, an MTM. Actually, screw that. You have you freaking have six hundred bucks to buy one or four hundred bucks to buy one of these things. You should buy a really good gun. Um, and so I would buy <clears throat> the OG spec gun. There's only four fittings that you need uh, to make this work. So I'd buy an OG inlet hose. You buy a pair, so two uh, garden hose males and two garden hose female couplers. You're gonna buy a, and I would just do the MTM fittings. Um, I don't know. This depends on, you go on the site, you can see the, the, the difference. I, mean, I would buy the Mossmatic fittings, but because then you, this is only going to last six months anyway, so you're going to be reusing this this stuff on on your next machine. Uh, and so I would buy the OG OG spec gun and wand. And so you're going to need two fittings for the pressure washer. You're going to need the um, actually no, I take it back. You're only going to need one fitting for the pressure washer, just one M22 coupler, and then that will connect. So that will screw into the hose. The end of the hose and right into right into the you know the gun and then you'll be able to quick disconnect here uh, and then you'll want to buy the MTM foam cannon as well uh, or Grios foam cannon or something like that and then you'll be able to use that on your next machine you know, stop buying the Chinese knockoff crap you know buy the real stuff be able to buy the real deal if any of you bought these you've got some coin so you could buy the right accessories for it so if you buy this after this video and you've seen this video, I really want to say the F word right now, but I don't use that word. Um, you are a freaking idiot. Like, just, you couldn't be dumber. No, I'm not gonna go there. No, that's, that's, just please don't do it. If you watch this video and you're still not sure, and you're like, this guy's Matt Mormon's a charlatan or whatever other stuff you're making up about me, just put that, those feelings aside. Go straight to Home Depot and buy a freaking any Ryobi, any Ryobi, or go to Lowe's and buy any Greenworks. You're gonna be much better off. You're gonna have hundreds more dollars in your pocket. If you were really smart, you would go to obsessgarage.com, you would start looking through the pressure washing section, and then you would make your decision on, you know, how much money am I willing to spend on a pressure washer? I, if you're in this price point, active 2.0 all day, every day of the week. And then if you can put together a few more dollars, you'd go Comet or AR Blue. If you can put together, you know, a bunch of dollars, Krenzla. Krenzla is what I have in my garage. It's, it's what I would recommend to everybody. I can buy any freaking pressure washer I want. Uh, and I've tried the vast majority of them. Uh, the one that's sort of on my docket that I think that I may be missing out on is Carter Professional, but it's so under-supported in the U.S., uh, it's hard to get, and they only have a few units, uh, and then uh, that, that, that is really interesting to me. And, of course, another interesting way to build a pressure washer is to, like, get yourself, like, a stainless steel cat head and then, you know, buy, like, a general pump, you know, a motor or something like that and kind of piece together your own, but most people aren't going aren't gonna to go down that path. So, thanks for watching. Go to obsessgarage.com. Do not 
ever go to drafttools.com for anything. Don't buy their hose reel. Don't buy their freaking garden hose thingy, majiggy. Uh, I'm telling you, it's absolute. It's catalog ordered, you know, garbage from a Chinese manufacturer that's just making the cheapest stuff, and then they're trying to make it look as pretty as possible uh, with nice colors and nice looking stuff that is just taking your money, and you, you might as well just light your money on fire. Just, you know. Just wipe your rear end with it and flush it down the toilet because that's what you just did. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.